Hello everybody and welcome back to the Enterprise Dish. We are hanging out, well, with ducks again because we are talking Office 365, Microsoft Teams, and we got a good reader question in this week um, from Miss Amy, who I think is going to have a question that applies to a lot of our listeners who are working from home. But ducks, how's it going, my man? I'm doing well. I'm a bit a little disappointed because it uh -oh. doesn't seem like you got the latest memo on the branding for Office 365. Are we talking Microsoft 365? <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you saw Office 365 in any mar Microsoft uh, marketing material? You know, Doc, some things are just ingrained in the brain and they take more. I don't even know how long. They've been called it Microsoft 365, what, since the spring? That's when they started that transition, if I'm correct. That's right. Yeah. We're, we're going to need longer than six months. We're going to need what it came out in 2012. So I've been calling it Office 365 for, we'll say, about seven and a half, eight years, something like that. <laughs> That's right. We're going to well, need need some time. I'll, I'll give you a pass because I know some colleagues still call it on-premise versus on-premises, but Ooh. it's okay. It means the same thing. Right. We, we all know what we're talking about here. But kicking things off today, Ducks, is actually something Microsoft announced. Well, we'll say this week because the podcast will probably go live uh, in the next 48 hours. Mm. Is a new, and I, I got to tell you, I don't get excited about Word all that often, but this feature is extremely applicable to everything that I do just as my career as a writer, is they're bringing transcription services to Word. Now, it's a little tricky at first because it's coming to Word, but it's only coming to the Word on the web initially. And what you can do is you can either A, um, it can listen, you know, like to this conversation if we want, sure. or I could take the audio file after this upload it and it'll transcribe it and kick it out like that is a it's a simple little thing but it's honestly a powerful little product i'm really excited about this well absolutely well a couple of things right the last time i was really excited about word was when clippy came out no, just kidding <laughs> well so that even predates office 365 so that's, that's right yeah that's quite that's right. quite a few years yeah, but I'm, I'm excited about this because for those of you not familiar, this idea of transcription is mm -hmm. nothing new to Microsoft. Sure, they're bringing, bringing it to Word, but they've already have it, for example, in PowerPoint. Today, when you do PowerPoint presentation, you can turn it on where in real time, uh, you'll see closed captioning and they can also transcribe. You can pick a language you want. It's also in stream. So when you do Teams meetings and you turn on recording, you have the option to take that recording and have stream auto transcribe it which also helps with the search mm -hmm. capability of, of uh, Teams when you're searching recorded meetings. So this is good, just like you, I'm excited about it. Yeah, the real the, there's a couple real obvious use cases here because not everybody candidly might use Stream. For example, students or teachers, what you can now do, or myself, honestly, as a journalist, is you can just record uh, an interview, uh, a lecture, mm. or anything else like that. You take that audio file, open up Word, upload it. You know, it takes a few minutes, it processes, and then it kicks it all back out in a text and digestible form uh, that you can, you know, manipulate as needed. And that's that's honestly pretty cool. There are third-party services that do that, but if you're paying for Microsoft 365, uh, then it's it's just included. You know, it, there's no extra payments. It's nice. Well, the cool. The cool thing too is there's option to pick different languages too because I know today in Teams live events mm -hmm. when we're doing internal town hall I can pick a language for the closed caption and as a result those closed caption would be transcribed in that language as well even though I'm speaking a different language which that really is an good. insanely powerful feature insanely powerful feature just it it speaks for, quite literally ducks it speaks for itself and by the way man I love that t-shirt <laughs> Oh, this shirt is, I don't know if you know uh, uh, Jeff from uh, Microsoft. He's part of the Microsoft design team. Mm -hmm. And this is his side hustle. He has all these really cool t-shirts. Jeffrey, is... uh, Jeffrey Cologne. I like it. I dig it. I might be looking into getting some of those. I actually, I was, you were, t we're talking about translation stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. What is it? And, the, and then I looked at your shirt. And I was like, man. Squirrel, is... squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Balloon. Exactly. For those who can't see, because I know most of our listeners are actually audio. So it says, it's creative is kind of like the, the play on words, but it's create T and it ends with V I. And then on the next line, it's T E E. So it's like creative T as in a t-shirt. So it's, I like creativity. it. Creativity. There we go. Creativity. I love it. I love it. The other thing ducks too. And I, I, I don't get to talk about my wife too much, especially on this podcast, but I've got to give her a shout out for this. So uh, Mr. Jeff Teeper, uh, tweeted out a picture that we, we, Microsoft, is working on breakout rooms for Teams. 
Huge. This, this is huge. My my wife quite literally last week completely. So they used to be a WebEx shop and they've moved over to Teams and they held. She's a director for a university at a pharmacy school, sure. and they held their complete new orientation onboarding inside of teams all inside of one teams she had all the channels like she set all this stuff up and completely orchestrated it and she said man you know it'd be great breakout rooms and then like 48 hours jeff tweets this out and i'm like ah like i got to run it to my wife and she was so happy oh, but you, no you should have honey i i i know oh yeah i called him i called that's brownie points right there exactly Exactly. But this is going to be applicable to a million different scenarios. Um, I mean, breakout rooms kind of speak for themselves. Interviewing, you can do conferences, you can do just sort of social engagements, which is, that's the curious scenario. I'm curious if it's going to work because that could become almost the, the virtual water cooler of like, hey, like here's where we go to hang out when people just want to chat at work type scenario. That's right. And, and workshops, right? So you oh, mentioned yeah, conferences. Yeah. But think about like if you're in a workshop type of setting. Uh, in the past, I do a lot of workshops, mm -hmm. and, and I have teams breaking onto into their own little group there and do drawings and what have you. So now you can mimic that. Well, this feature certainly is not new because Zoom has it, mm -hmm. but having it in Teams, I think, would make a world of difference, especially in light of the recent out outage Zoom uh, experience. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of a lot of corporations have redundant messaging environments for that same reason. Microsoft is not immune to it. Zoom is not immune to it. Google uh, Hangout or Meet, whatever they're calling it this week, is not immune to it. And mm -hmm. you always got to have a backup solution. But um, I, my only ongoing sort of frustration, I guess, with Microsoft 365 is that it's great. We know this is coming, but it, it's going to arrive somewhere between now and an undetermined amount of time. Uh, for your tenant, but it will eventually show up. It will eventually show up. So. Absolutely. Uh, other things that I think are pertinent to our readers, Ducks, is that Teams is going to be ending support for IE11. Now, if you're still using IE11, I have some other questions for you. Uh, but if you're using it to work on, effectively, think of all Microsoft 365 at this point. That is going to be going away. At least they're no longer actively supporting it. So that could be a hang up for some people. I, man, I don't remember the last time I used IE11. It reminds me back when I was still traveling, I would go through airports and they, I would see these, these uh, you know, departure arrival boards and then they'll get blue screen of death because they're still <laughs> Windows 95, right? So it's the same thing. Move along. Speaking of Windows 95, Ducks turned 25 this week. 25. It, it yeah. officially gets the lower insurance rate when it rents a car. Um, <laughs> I hope nobody's re running Windows 95, but I'm sure it's running somewhere. But, but we got to give that props because without Windows 95, we won't have that start button or the whole concept of yeah. Windows 10 today, right? So. Yeah, it was a, a monumental release is probably even underselling what Windows 95 was to the environment. I still I still remember I was I was a kid, definitely. But installing that thing on like 50 floppy disks, I remember sitting mm. in my parents' basement, it's like put one in, you just wait, and then it kicks it out and just one floppy at a time. But man... Oh, oh, oh. Wasn't it that launch where Bill Gates and Balmer was dancing on stage? Is oh, that yeah. what it is? That's where all the famous gifts come from. Are those two dancing around like uh, hooligans on a stage just having the time of their life? Uh, man. man. Good for them, though. Good for them. <laughs> very, very good for them financially <laughs> long run, too. That was the birth of, of Microsoft's dominance, really. Just a mm. crazy time. Crazy time. All right, Ducks. Question for you. Very yes. good question. This one comes from Amy, and she says, okay. we need new headsets for our work-from-home employees that work well with Teams. Does Ducks or to Brad have any recommendations for what we should offer to our employees? Absolutely. I have three recommendations. Three. Nice. Depending on your price range, right? Yep. So if you're a U.S.-based company, uh, one of the most inexpensive headsets, yet really good that I found, I've tried, is from Best Buy. Uh, it's their own brand, Insignia. It's like 10 bucks. USB really? headset, compatible with Teams, 10 bucks. It's great. I mean, it's not like you can listen to orchestra music there, sure. but it gets the job done. Second level is if you can get a headset from Plantronics, uh, mm -hmm. it ranges. And when I say headset from Plantronics, get it wired. Um, those wired ones are really good, ranges from 30 bucks to 60 bucks. Now, if you want to go wireless, what you need to get are the headsets 
that comes with a USB uh, wireless adapter too. And yes. here's the reason why. Because for some reason, Windows, if you try to connect the, the Bluetooth, you know, those fancy Bluetooth, uh, mm -hmm. Bose, what have you, directly with Windows, it's a hit or miss. There's something with a Bluetooth driver and adapter. So get those wireless headsets that comes with a, blue, uh, a USB Bluetooth adapter as well. My recommendation is the um, uh, Bose most recent one that's uh, noise canceling. I think mm -hmm. it's a Q, I forgot what model it is, but whatever the latest one. In fact, they had an announcement with Microsoft Teams as well. Kind of pricey, but sounds really good. So those are the three that I highly recommend. Oh, I didn't mean, I didn't actually even think about this, but I quite literally just got these guys. Oh, uh, is it? Oh, that's not the four. The no, these are the three. These are the three. So the reason why, so what Dux, Dux is very astute and up to date on his Sony headphones. So these are, my, Sony needs some branding people, Dux. Maybe you can <laughs> float them if you want to. These are the they need W. Creativity. The WH one thousand X M M X M threes. So that mouthful is what these guys are. Now these guys are great. These have, in my opinion, the best uh, noise canceling yes. headphones on the market by far. I actually bought these and a pair of Surface headphones because these just dropped to two hundred and fifty. Only they, that that used to be four hundred bucks. Right. That is why because the fours just came out. And so these are the last generation. And the biggest difference between the, the uh, M3s and the M4s, the M4s support multiple Bluetooth devices. So you can have it paired to your phone or the PC, which is super handy because to, I completely agree with Dux's point that there is something finicky about Bluetooth connectivity in Windows. And it just, like, I will turn these things on and it'll say, you are now connected, but it won't flip to the headphones. You got to manually go in there and do it. It's a pain in the butt, but these are fantastic. And so if you want to spend the dollars, I highly recommend these. They're like $249 on sale, but they will be going away. I'm assuming that once stock is completely gone, they're gone because the new uh, M4s so are out. So. What I suggest with that, though, if you do want to use the wireless capability of that Sony M3s, yeah. just go to Amazon. There's like a $10 Bluetooth adapter you can mm -hmm. buy. So it, it essentially it'll take over, but the connection is much better. Or just use it wired. Yeah, and wired is also a great solution. I these things, if you are looking at the service headphones to get these, these are significantly better. Nothing not knocking that the service headphones, but they're the same price now. And these things used to be like a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars more. And so those are also a good options. I'm a big personal fan. Um, just coming from like that IT vantage point, get everyone a wired headset. Not not only because they're cheaper, but as a if you have to, if you think about you're giving like these to a hundred people or something, I don't know a specifically Amy scenario. It's just one less thing you got to worry about potentially. Yeah. But if you're going for optimum convenience and comfort, Ducks is totally right with the the wired or wireless headsets are are definitely the way to go. So, man, Ducks, you know, you know what else has come out since we've talked? What? Ignite. Ignite's getting some big changes. What's what's on your agenda for Ignite? Microsoft is splitting it up. By the way, uh, Chris Capicella did not take my suggestion in calling it Ignite Duo. They just announced the Surface Duo, which is coming <laughs> September 10th. And now they're splitting Ignite into two events. And they, they should have called it Ignite Duo. But what's on your agenda? Anything you're looking forward to? Are you participating this year? I know you're always heavily participated on, in the on-premises version. But this is the, <laughs> uh, the cloud version of Ignite. This is the cloud edition, yeah. right? So first and foremost... Um, I think Microsoft has learned a lot from doing mm -hmm. build virtually and inspire recently. They did it virtual. So Ignite will move forward in a similar format with Microsoft Inspire. Essentially it's it's two days, 24 by seven, a marathon. So we will cover all the different time zones and regions around the world and people can attend. Second, it's free, which is great. Um, similar to the Inspire model, they'll have uh, uh, essentially a host that will kick it off and then the sessions and then in between they'll have segments. But what's really cool is they'll have these uh, table talk session that was very successful at Inspire. It's, it's quick 30 minutes, get people in, have folks in the industry help facilitate on a specific topic. So that, that's going to be cool. And uh, like Brad mentioned, it's, there's going to be two Ignite because in the past there was a physical big Ignite and then they have Ignite tours around the world. So at this point, that's not possible. So they'll have a back-to-back -back Ignite. I don't know when the next one would be just yet. Right. For us specifically, or for me, 
Um, I, I, I've thrown in feelers. Uh, hopefully, I'll get involved in some stuff. But for our point, we'll, we're, we'll definitely be at Ignite as a sponsor. And uh, I know traditionally we throw a really cool app point red mm -hmm. party. I know you're, you're missing that, Brad. I am. I am very but, much missing that. But this is, I've never, we haven't told anybody yet. We are going to have app point red. Oh. And, and it's nothing like you've ever seen online. So stay tuned and uh, watch out for app point red extravaganza. Yeah, the other big disappointment with not having Ignite, like in person, I should say, is the Ducks, we don't get to go racing again. Like I know. And, and speaking of racing, our Ducati as well. We looked at how to do that, but now with virtual, it, it's tricky, right? Because there's different time zones and, yeah. and trying to figure out with a lot of the restriction these days. So unfortunately, not this year. Well, I'm gonna still going to put my name into the hat for next year when I'm you know, hoping by all means. Actually, you know what would be awesome? is, And I have no idea if this is going to happen. So Microsoft has already announced, right, they're having that extra Ignite or whatever sometime next year. Maybe, ju well, maybe just maybe there's a potential for some in-person activity, but we will see. We will see. Mm. So, well, Ducks, that is a, that's a handful of stuff. Lots of good stuff happening in the teams. Anything else happening on your side of the equation? Uh, it's just, look, it's school starting back up yep. September already. It's like, you know, it's like uh, when March happened, right? It's like so long and then mm. and then suddenly it's September. Yeah. So just looking forward for this new school year. Again, very grateful that uh, we do what we do and uh, just chugging along. And speaking of Microsoft 365 too, uh, you know, lots of new stuff coming out other than what we talked about list is out microsoft 365 oh, yeah, yeah, microsoft yeah. Tasks is out so a lot of goodness there really is and i don't think it's going to be slowing down anytime soon because even though microsoft still has ignite ignite is usually like a massive dump of announcements and features and all that good stuff which is going to be right around i, I keep forgetting it is september in like six days from now that next time we do this podcast, we'll be right probably in the thick of it. So that's going to be, yeah. that's going to be fun, well, man. Nick, we'll be talking about Microsoft TikTok, right? Wow. Wow. We, wow. We will see. We will see, Ducks. <laughs> I was not expecting that one. I was expecting like list, SharePoint, nope, TikTok. We will see what happens with the TikTok, Ducks. But we very much appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Amy, thank you for asking the question. Hopefully we provided you with some sort of a solution or at least something to look into. To everybody else, don't hesitate to email us with questions. That's the best part of every podcast are your questions. And we'll catch all of you right back here next time. Bye. <laughs>